Have you ever seen the British crown jewels? Well, now you have. There they are. Wow. So the, Brit- you see the British crown jewels is this amazing collection of over of 142 royal ceremonial objects. They're like crowns, swords, um, scepters, whole suits of armor, capes. Like they got everything. Like it, it, if it exists, they got it, and it's like blinged up. You know what I'm saying? Tons of stuff. So in this collection, there are over 23,000 precious stones. 23,000. These are the these are like the biggest diamonds. These are called the I have to remember it, the Cullinan diamonds. These were all cut from the same diamond. It was like this big. They found it. It was this big. Can you imagine like the sweat of the guy who had to like make the cut on that thing? It's like, <sighs> oh, and then it shatters into a thousand pieces. Oh my goodness. But these are amazing. These are like those two big ones, the Cullinan one, the one on the top that's like kind of a spear shape, teardrop shape. That's the one in the royal scepter. That's like almost 600 carats. Like, I view if someone's got a one-carat ring, like, they're doing pretty well. You know what I mean? They're doing pretty well. 600 carats. It's this big. Huge. So this collection, these, these crown jewels, these royal jewels, over 23,000 precious stones, diamonds, sapphires, emeralds, rubies, agates, jades, everything you can possibly imagine, each one of these jewels, as you can see, holds immeasurable value a measurable value. They are precious. They are wonderful. They are unique. Nothing compares to their beauty. Like if you saw that in real life, you would look at that, you would be drawn to it. Like, wow, that is amazing. Nothing compares to their beauty. And that's just the stones themselves. Like all all the stones, just like the rocks. What happens when you wear them? What happens when you put them on? This is King Charles III, the, king, the current king of England. When you put them on, the stones retain their beauty. They're still beautiful. You can see that there's the two big um, diamonds. The one is that's in the scepter that he's holding in his hand, and then the smaller, slightly smaller one is in his crown. You can't really see that one that well. So the stones, they are still beautiful. They still retain their beauty. But what about the person? What happened to the person when he put them on? When he wore it, he was elevated. He was lifted up. You see, the jewels, not only are they precious in and of themselves, but they also bestow honor, dignity, and respect to the one who wears them. Isn't that interesting? So the jewels are in themselves precious, but they give prestige to the wearer. Are you following me? Great. What's the point? Like, what does that matter? Like, who cares? <laughs> well, turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 31, verse 10. And you'll see pretty quick. Proverbs 31, verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. She is precious. She is wonderful. She is worthy of praise. And then Proverbs 12, verse 4, says, A worthy wife is the crown of her husband. A worthy wife is the crown of her husband. So because of her presence, because he is not, he's wearing her in a sense, because she is with him, the husband receives prestige honor, dignity, and respect. He is elevated because of her. So we are in a sermon series called Relationships According to Proverbs. We're going to take it just a three-week mini-series, three weeks. The first week, we're going to be talking about marriage. I have the blessing of talking to you guys about marriage today. The next week, we're going to be talking about friendship, and then finally, parent, being, being a parent, parenthood. And Proverbs has a lot to say about marriage. But as I was studying and I was reading through Proverbs and what it had to say, I noticed this theme and this way that Solomon and the other writers used to describe 
the women of the Bible. He used to describe the wives, and it is very affirming. It is very beautiful, and it's that of gems. It is that of jewels, but it's also that of a crown. And I just thought that it was interesting that it's so, such a prevalent theme, and the theme and the main point that we're going to be talking about throughout this sermon is this. In marriage, husbands are to treat their wives as precious, like jewels, like gems, something that is worthy of honor and respect. And wives are to bring their husbands prestige, that dignity, that honor, the elevation, lifting them up. In other words, as you might remember from Ephesians 5, husbands, love your wives, and wives, respect your husbands. We'll be talking about each of these in turn. So we'll start with the husbands because it's good to get them out of the way at the beginning and give them, give them the beating first. <laughs> so number one, husbands, love your wives. Treat your wives as precious. Proverbs 31 verse 10 says, again, who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Eight, then 18 verse 22 says, the man who finds a wife finds a treasure, and he receives favor from the Lord. And finally, chapter 19 verse 14, fathers can give their sons an inheritance of houses and of wealth, but only the Lord can give a man an understanding wife. You see, a wife is a blessing and a gift from the Lord. She is a gift from God. And they can so greatly enrich your life. They, they make your life better. They make your life better. They help you to be better. They are a treasure. They are a jewel. Because you have it, you feel it's, it's like your life is improved. And this is how we should treat our wives. And I love that illustration of a precious jewel because it is so universal. We can all look at those pictures of the gems, those pictures of diamonds, sapphires, rubies, etc., and say, that is beautiful, that is wonderful, that is worthy of praise, that is something that is worthy of being taken care of, that is something that I do not want to lose. Amen? I remember when I was I don't remember this because I was two, but my mom told me this story. <laughs> uh, so I say I remember this, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's in there somewhere. Um, when, I was, when my brother was four years old, so he was just a toddler, he was playing with my mom's wedding ring, her engagement ring. And her engagement ring had three stones on it. It had two sapphires and a ruby in the middle. And as he was playing with it, he lost the ruby. Like the ruby fell out of the placement. And so, you know, my mom goes to take it back and the ruby is gone. Like the middle piece, the, the big one, you know, the good, the good one in the middle, it's just gone, <laughs> right? And so my mom would tell me the story about how she searched for that ruby for days and weeks and months and years. And guess what? She never found that ruby. It was gone. It's gone. Like, it, the person who bought our house inherited it in the floorboard somewhere, and they'll never know, <laughs> right? It's gone. What a travesty to have lost something that precious. She still probably thinks about it. Horrible. What a travesty to lose something so precious. Precious. Beautiful wonderful, worthy of praise, worthy of being taken care of. This is how we are to see our wives. We are to look upon them and say, she is precious. She is beautiful. She is wonderful. She is worthy of praise. She is someone I want to take care of. She is someone I do not want to lose. Proverbs 5, verse 18, says it in such a beautiful way. It says, let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving deer, a graceful doe. May she satisfy you always. 
may you always be captivated by her love. May you always be captivated by her love. May you look upon her every single morning at her beauty, at her grace, at her wisdom, at her skill, at who she is intrinsically, who God made her as a person, and say, she is precious, she is mine, she is my one and only, and I want to take care of her. And this is a challenge sometimes for us men myself included. Because as much as I can say from the pulpit, as much as we can say in our, in, our, in our own lives, my wife is precious to me, I love my wife, this is great, sometimes we don't act that way in reality. We don't actually see our wives as precious. We don't actually treat our wives as precious, even though at some point we did. And this is what I've decided is the problem. This is what the Bible is pointing to. It's that so often the wife that we once regarded as fantastic over time became familiar. The wife that we once regarded as fantastic over time became familiar. You got used to her. I got used to her. You see her every day. You wake up to her in the morning every single day. You know what she looks like without makeup. Not men do. Not many men do. You got used to her. And in your mind's eye, you took the diamond for granted. And I'm just going to give you all a moment to recognize how good of a pun that was. (laughs) You took the diamond for granted. Something that was precious and is precious, over time you started seeing it as less and less and less so. You see what Solomon is saying? You see what the book of Proverbs is saying? Don't let it happen to you. Men, I am talking to you. Don't let this happen to you. Don't ever regard your wife, who is precious, as mundane. She is your treasure. She is your jewel. She is your gift from God. And notice here that the issue is not with your wife. The Bible is clear. She is a treasure. She is a jewel. She is a graceful doe. doe. She is a loving deer. Whichever one that, there's something about a deer and a doe. A loving deer and a graceful doe. The command here is, may you always be captivated by her love. May you always recognize that she is precious. May you always never lose sight of her. May you be captivated. To be captivated means to be so totally engrossed by something. Like it's never out of your sight. My wife is precious. And Solomon's like, listen guys, I know your problem. This is how you fix it. You just got your perception has to stay fixed. You can't take the diamond for granted. You have to see her that way because you have to see her for who she intrinsically is as a person, and that is how God made her. God made her precious. God made her beautiful. God made her skillful and wonderful and amazing. We just have to see it and then act out that way. And that's why this is a warning in in chapter 5, and I wasn't going to get into this, but God's telling me to, so here we go. It's a warning in chapter 5 after it says, Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She's a loving, dear, a graceful doe. May she satisfy you always. May you always be captivated for her love. Why, Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman? Why have your eyes turn away from the gem that was so precious to you and look upon other stones? in real life, or on the internet, or anything else. And it doesn't even have to be another woman. It could be your new car. It could be your house. It could be your job. It is something that takes your attention away from the wife who is once so precious to you and who is precious, and you're distracted by something else. You're saying, I'm focusing on that thing and not on my wife. I'm loving that thing and not my wife. 23,000 stones in the royal collection, you're called to love one. There are many things that could draw our attention in this life. 
whether it be women, whether it be cars or houses, whether it be a job, whether it be whatever, you are called to love one and view one as precious. One earthly thing. Always love the Father, obviously, too. Does that make sense? Don't take the diamond for granted. Don't allow someone who is precious to become mundane in your mind's eye. May you always be captivated by her love. For she is precious. She is your one. She is your only. Your blessing. Your treasure. And tell her that. Praise her. Lift her up. Proverbs 31, 28, 29 says, Her children stand and bless her, this wife of noble character. Her husband praises her. He says, There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. In the world there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of precious gems, jewels, and artifacts, but you are only one for me. And that is you. And that is the attitude that men are to take into their marriage. And if you are not married yet, this is a hint to you and a command from the Lord. Take this into your marriage. Listen to this. on like This will set you up for success, but it will also set you up for a marriage of love. And it is something that I have to work on, something that every single one of us men has to work on regardless of how long we've been in our marriage. I got to tell you, Nothing harder than being a pastor and having to research this and learn about this and realize my life is not adding up. And I need to treat my wife like she is precious. I need to treat my wife like she is valuable to me. And sometimes I mess up. And I have to be willing to come to the plate and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I love you. I do think you're precious. <laughs> Uh, are you hearing me, husband? Husband? Good, you're done. <laughs> okay, wives, you're up next. <laughs> uh, wives, respect your husbands. Bring your husband's prestige. What does prestige mean? Is that like, just like a Christopher Nolan film? I don't know. Um, bring your husband's prestige. It means bring them dignity, bring them honor, respect, lift them up. Help them to feel better about themselves. Help them to be better. Help them to see themselves as better. Help the world to see them as better. Your job as a woman is to lift up your husband. Make him better. And that's why it says in Proverbs 12, verse 4, a worthy wife is a crown for her husband. She is a crown. In other words, she, she helps him feel like a king. She helps him become a king. She helps him look like a king. You see, you women are precious in and of yourself. That's why you are a jewel. That's why you are a diamond, a ruby, a sapphire. In and of yourself, you are precious. You are worthy of praise. But for your husband to gain prestige, he needs your help. See, the hus it's not like the woman is a jewel and the husband is the crown. That's not what it says. It says the woman is the, the wife is the, the jewel and she is the crown. Precious in and of herself, and yet she brings prestige to the other person. She brings prestige to the other person. You see, you are the perfect helper. And don't get offended when I say helper. God himself referred to himself, I am the helper. And I got to tell you, it's in Genesis. Somehow we, we get the false idea that someone who is a helper is like a servant or something. That someone who is a helper is lesser than the person they help. That is not the case. Someone who is a helper is someone who comes along the other, the side of the other, and makes them better. 
helps them do their job. How he, she supports him. And we see it in right in the beginning. Genesis chapter 2. Adam was, God just had created the first man, Adam, and it says he was lonely. He was alone. It was just him and God. And he, he wanted someone else. And so the Lord God said in verse 18, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. I will make him the perfect helper. And so he makes all the animals. He said, okay, I'll start with animals. I'll bring the dog, the goat, the, you know, the bunny, all this stuff. I'm going to bring them to Adam. He's like, here, take, take a look at these. You can name them. Which one of these will be your perfect helper? But there was a problem. Verse 20. After Adam had named and talked to and been with all the animals, he said there was still no helper who was just right for him. You can get a lot of work done with an ox. You can get a lot of work done with a horse. But that's still not the perfect helper for a man. So the Lord God caused him to fall into a deep sleep. And while the man slept, the Lord took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening, making him incomplete. He took out a piece of him, making him lacking something. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man, and Adam says, at last. It's like that song, you know? At last. This is the first poem in the Bible. Do you know this? It's like the first time a man sees a woman, the first poem in the Bible. At last, yes. This one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. And this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined, the missing piece is brought back, is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. You see, you are the perfect helper. At last, he had it. You are the missing piece. You are his crown. Proverbs 31, back talking about the wife of noble character again. It says this, you are his crown. It says, who can find a virtuous and capable wife again? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. She will make his life better. And then in this same passage, talking about the wife of noble character, it talks about a woman who is an amazing woman of God. She's doing all these amazing things. She's supporting her family. She's running businesses. She's doing real estate. She's doing all these amazing and admirable things for a woman. And then, right in the midst of this, in the midst of all of her work, verse 23, it says, Her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. Because of her hard work, because of her help, because of her character, he was elevated. He was lifted up, brought to a position of honor. Because this, this parable, this, 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 this vision of a man, like this story isn't about a man who worked hard to get to a position of honor. This story is about a woman who worked really hard, who had excellent character, who lived a life of nobility, and because of her, he was lifted up to a place and position of honor. It's because of her that this happened, that he sits at the city gates. So through your hard work, through your help and character, your husband's life can be both enriched and elevated. You cannot only help him feel like a king, you can help him become one. You can help him reach his greatest potential, like nobody else in the world can. You are his perfect helper. And this is a wonderful challenge for wives. Just as I challenged the men to treat their wives as precious, women, I'm now challenging you to bring your husband's prestige. And it is a challenge to women because there's a flip side to the power that you hold. Like, recognize, like, can you recognize, like, this is a powerful gift you have been given. And with great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man said that. Actually, Uncle Ben said that to Spider-Man. So, 
So, and if Uncle Ben said that as, as his dying words, you can take it out to the bank. <laughs> it is a challenge to women because there is a flip side. Proverbs 12, verse 4. I read the first part, but I got to tell you, I forgot the end. Proverbs 12, verse 4 says, A worthy wife is a crown for her husband. But a di- disgraceful woman is like cancer in his bones. A worthy wife is a crown for her husband, but a disgraceful woman is like cancer in his bones. You see, you have the power to raise him up, but you also have the power to bring him down. That image of the crown, of a man standing with a crown on his head, is someone walking with his back straight, someone who is strong, someone who is bold, someone with a scepter in his hand, someone with a crown on his head. Can you show that picture, please? Someone walking strong, powerful. But the image of a man who has cancer in his bones is someone whose back is crippled. He walks like this. He walks in shame. He walks in embarrassment. He walks feeling like in, he feeling like the world is disappointed in him. He walks feeling like no matter what he does, he cannot get it right. And we have all seen men like this who walk in shame throughout their lives. And it is a travesty because this right here is a picture of what could be and what often is. What could be is that the women have the power to make your men to help him become a king, but so often he becomes a pauper. So women, recognize the power that you have the power to build your husband up. You have the power to make him feel like a king. And in the same way, we look at, you know, sometimes it's easier to look at the picture of the diamond and the granite and say, man, you need to treat your wives better. You need to stop treating your wife like a piece of rock and start treating her like a diamond. But then we flip the script, and it's hard to see talk about this. Especially me, I'm a man, you know. Shouldn't we get a woman up here saying this to you guys? I don't know. But I'm just reading to you what the Bible is saying and what I've seen so often in my, own, in my own life. So in the same way, men, don't treat your women like a piece of rock. Treat her as precious. Treat her as a diamond, not granite. In the same way, women, see your husbands as a king, not as a pauper, and help him to reach that level because, remember, he can't do it on his own. He's missing something. That piece was taken out of him to make the perfect helper. You have such power and such responsibility. Do not whip your husband. Flip your husband. I thought of that this morning. (laughs) Do not whip your husband. Flip your husband. You know, you watch those home flipping shows. When you watch those shows, you see the woman come in, she looks around the house, and it's a mess. It looks awful. It's like, you know, it looks like horrible. But she walks into the house, and she says, this place has got good bones. I see potential. There's potential here. I can help make this better. And the difference between whipping your husband and flipping him is a whipper will say, I look, at the, I look at the house, and I'm going to tear it down. Let's start over. Boom, you suck. Boom, you're not good enough. Boom, you're like, you never do anything right. Wreck, wreck, wreck. You came in like a wrecking ball in his life. But someone who wants to flip their husband says, I see you for who you truly are. I know you, I understand you, you can be so much better, and I'm not going to make you better, I'm going to help you get there. I'm going to support you. I see you as a king, and I'm going to draw that out of you. That is a good woman. That is a wife of noble character. How many of you want to be like that? 
How many of you want a wife like that? I have a wife like that, I'm just going to say. Yes. <laughs> I have a wife like that. Someone who looks into the heart of me and sees me for who I could be and sees the strengths that God has given me and says, I want to draw that out. I want to make that better so I can live and act and talk like a king. Okay. Hmm. You see, you're helping cultivate him to become a leader, to become a man of wisdom and strength and authority. What a great calling. You are a jewel. You are precious in and of yourself, but you are also his crown, making him the best that he can be. You two were brought together to make each other's lives better. You were brought together to make two pieces that were once separate to make it whole. Making each other's lives better and making the world better. And that is your calling. And it starts right here, with love and with respect. So husbands, love your wives. Treat them and see them every single day as precious, as wonderful, as worthy of praise, as worthy of being taken care of, as someone you do not want to lose. And for those of you men who maybe you're not married yet, this is what you should be, how you should be treating the women you're dating. This is how you should be treating the, every woman in your life, really, but particularly your wife. Look for this. Find a woman who is precious and never let it go. Never let her go and treat her that way for the rest of her life. And wives, respect your husbands. That meaning of respect, it's not just submitting. Respecting is seeing someone as great. That's what I'm trying to communicate. Respecting is seeing someone as wonderful, is seeing someone for the best that they could be. Bring him prestige. Draw that out of him. Bring him honor. Raise him up. And both of you commit to doing it regardless of the other person. So many times I hear, well, I'll start loving him when he starts respecting me, or I'll start loving her when she starts respecting me, or vice versa. Well, I'll respect him when he starts loving me. No way. You do what you do. You follow God's commandments. Wives, respect your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. You do your part and let God deal with him. Let God deal with her. Communicate this. Communicate that, you know, I just didn't feel loved the other day when you said that. You know, I really didn't feel respected when you did, when you did that. Communicate with each other. Sarah and I have, commu have conversations like this all the time where we're talking about this. Don't be afraid to talk to each other and say, listen, you hurt my feelings. But the purpose of these conversations is not to tear each other down. The purpose of these conversations is to become better as a couple. And he will never know, and she will never know, until you tell them. The devil whispers into your ear so many times these words. Well, he should know if he really loved me. Well, if, if she loved me, she, she would do something different. I don't need to say that. That's a lie from the depths of hell. Just talk to each other, for God's sake. Like, you're married to each other. You've seen every bit of each other. Like, you, you, you live with each other. You know each other. Just talk with each other. Have the courage to say, listen, that hurt my feelings. I, I didn't feel respected. Listen, that hurt my feelings. I didn't feel loved. And this is why. And the other person, you need to listen. Listen. Like, shut your mouth for five minutes. And just listen to, to, the, to the other person. Let them say their piece. And be willing in your heart to have a softened heart and say, you know, maybe she's right. Maybe he's right. And then talk it through. Work it through. Get to, like, figure it out together. Women, you are so precious. So precious. And God made you that way. And we are so blessed to have you, not only as our wives, but also as our sisters in Christ. God made you so well. 
made you to be perfect for us men. And men, you walk with dignity. You have the potential to walk with honor, the potential to walk with your head held high. That's in you. That's in every single one of you. And your wife can bring it out in you. Husbands, do your part. Wives, do your part. Amen? Amen. All right. Why don't you all stand to your feet? How many of you husbands, or those who want to be husbands, want to be more loving? Every, every eye closed, eye closed, eye closed. <laughs> 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 this is secret. <laughs> Want to be more loving to their spouses. I'm raising my hand. I'm raising my hand. How many women want to be more respecting to their wife, to their husbands? Amen. Well, let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, we see just the beautiful the beautiful relationship that you have given us in marriage between a man and a woman, Lord. You have brought two pieces that were once separate. You brought them together, together to be better and to make the world better. And we thank you for that, God. Like, who, who could have thought of that, Lord? We thank you. I lift up these men to you. And Lord, I pray that their eyes would always be drawn toward their wives. I pray that they would always regard their wives as precious and not mundane. I pray that you will strengthen their character and just strengthen their ability to, to show that love to them, God. Lord, I pray that you will increase every man's communication ability in Jesus' name right now to help them speak to their wives and praise them. Like the like Proverbs says, lift them up, say they're great, say they're wonderful, say they are amazing. I pray that you will gift them that way. And Lord, I lift up the wives to you or those who will become wives. And Lord, I pray that you will help them to also see their husbands as a king, to see their husbands with dignity and honor and respect. And I pray that you will help them to walk that out and help them to draw it out of them in a way that builds them up and not breaks them down. Lord, we submit to you in everything. And we see that your plan for marriage mirrors your relationship between Jesus and the, his church. You loved your church so much that you were willing to lay down your life for it. And we, as your church, we love you so much that we give you honor and dignity and respect as our leader. So Lord, bless these men, bless these women. And for those of us who, who aren't in a marriage, Jesus, don't plan to be. Don't feel called to it, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will bless them too. And I pray that you will just fill them with your love. Fill them with your blessing. If they are men, I pray that you will draw, you will draw out of them the king inside. And if they are women, I pray that you will show them right now how deeply precious, how deeply wonderful, how deeply loved they are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we never want to end any service without giving an invitation. If is there anyone in this room who wants to take this time to say, I want to follow Jesus. I want to lay my life on the line. I want to say, Jesus, I want to follow you for the rest of my life. Is there anyone who would want to do that? Would you raise your hand, please? If you're online, you can raise your hand, too. Okay. Well, it looks like we're good in here. But in case you raise your, your, your hand online, let's all pray together. Say, Jesus, we love you. I know I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins. I turn to you. And I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I love you guys. God bless. Man, what a great...
great, challenging, encouraging word. Amen? We got work to do. I just encourage you, make it practical. Husbands, wives, make it practical. And give each other the chance to change, right? And give each other the benefit of the doubt. And uh, I, I just, let's make it really practical. Say something encouraging to your spouse today. Can we do that? I mean, it's like really, really simple. Just do it, okay? Uh, such a good, good word. Thank you, Pastor Christian. Uh, just a reminder, yeah. <laughs> just a reminder, on your way out, you can turn your Connect cards in the black box on the wall. Uh, and in the lobby, if you're new to following Jesus or if you chose to follow him for the first time today, we have a table in the lobby uh, it has a big sign that says Following Jesus. We want to give you a free book and courses online that just helps you walk it out. Especially if you're new to faith, like it's, it's great to make a decision in a service, but there's a whole life that comes after that of following and knowing Jesus. So we want to equip you, resource you to do that. Uh, we thank you guys for being here. Have a great 4th of July, and we'll see you next Sunday.